All right, cool. Welcome back to Yay Math with yaymath.org. We are now going to be talking about linear equations, right? Um, it's just basically equations of lines. We're going to talk about what they mean, some of the rules, and uh, try to shed some light on some stuff that uh, is traditionally been kind of like not so fun. Um, and I want to make it fun for you, so let's do that. So the first question is how to spot a line when you see it, okay? So basically the rule is if you're basically adding or subtracting x's and y's, and I guess that's x's and y's, then it's a line. If you do any funny business, it's no longer a line. All right, so if you see like square root of x, not a line, no funny business. If you see y squared or x squared or x cubed, no funny business, not a line. If you see 1 over x, not a line, okay? So we're talking about stuff like this, like y equals 2x minus 1, for example. Here we're adding and subtracting x's. We're allowed to multiply x by stuff as long as we don't make it the square root of x or x squared or anything like that. So that's not allowed. But if you just make it, you know, your standard x's and y's and adding numbers, then that would constitute a line. Speaking of standard, sadly, I must report that we're going to talk about this thing called standard form. It's like my least favorite thing to do in life. I really just, I don't like it. Um, and I'm so sorry to have to report that in, in honesty to you. But they ask about it, and I just, even the name, dude, standard form. Like, yeah, I, I recommend that you live your life in a very standard way, right? I want you to eat standard. I want you to live your day standard and drive in the same lane to work or school every day. Just be standard, all right? You can sense the frustration and <laughs> oozing out of me. This is what standard form basically means. You take a line, and you put it, it has certain requirements, all right? So basically, those requirements are, x and y on left, and numbers on the right. No fractions, no decimals. No fractions, no decimals. Uh, what else? I hate these rules. You have to have it in simplest form, meaning like if you can divide both sides by something to make it simple, you should, as long as it's not a fraction or a decimal. And get this. The first x has to be positive for some strange reason. So like for example, if we wanted to take this line and put it in the standard form, we have to bring all the x's and y's on the left side, and the number in this case, negative 1, we keep it on the right. So how do we get that x on the left? We subtract both sides by 2x. All right, and so, and, and <sighs> position x first. <laughs> and why <Y> second? <laughs> I love the freedom to just be able to like, just scoff at this thing, right? Because you have to sell it to the students so hard. Like, actually, I never really sold it to the students. I'm like, yeah, I don't really like it. I don't like it. But I had to keep it together. Right now, I'm just like, I hate it! <laughs> it's like, I just hate it so much. <laughs> because it's like, who cares? This is fine for me. This is fine for me. I, I can use this. Why do I need to refashion and reorient it and put it over here? I don't get it. It's, I have better things to do with my life, put it that way. Like learn something that's actually different than this. So here it comes. If the x is first and the y is second, that would mean negative 2x plus y equals negative 1. But since we can't have the x being negative, the first one, where is it? First x positive? Same voice, we have to multiply the sides by negative 1. So let's do that. There it is. Boom! Multiply everything by negative 1. Let's do it. And we distribs, all right? Distribs, like baby backs distribs. Uh, go through, that becomes 2x. Multiply negative 1 here, minus y. Multiply negative 1 here, 1. There's your standard form, all right? Are you happy now? Cool, okay? Let's do, who am I talking to? <laughs> the voices in my head. Something a little more interesting um, than the standard form is once we can get it in standard form, 
is uh, understanding some hidden gems within this line. First of all, let's um, figure out if it's a line. Is there any funny business going on with x or y? I don't see it. I don't see square roots. I don't see squared. I don't see x in the denominator or y in the denominator or anything. I don't see x times y. That's another one. No funny business. Just adding and subtracting x's and y's, and that's pretty much a line. What we're going to now explore within our linear equations are what are called x and y intercepts on a graph, such as here. All right, so there we have our graph. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And we ask ourselves, where on the graph does this line cross through the y-axis? That's called a y-intercept. So fascinating, even though people are studying this in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, they, they don't get a fix on what this means. Um, let's just talk about what it means. If we agree that we're going to cross through this axis, the y-axis, there's something always true at this axis. Some value is always the same. And I'll actually put it on you to think about it. Let's come up with the potential point for this right here as I step on my own foot. Let's come up with a potential value. What comma what? Well, if you look closely, if we're going to try to do x comma y, we didn't move left or right, so that would mean 0 for x, and then maybe we went up 2. Okay? Maybe you could start to see the pattern now. What would this be? Again, did we move left or right to get here? No, we didn't. Right? So since we only move down, that's 0, negative 1. Do you spot the pattern now? We'll do it one more. Let's take a second. What would that point be? What comma what? What would be consistent with these two points? Right? Hopefully you see the fact that there is no x value. This x value is 0. Let's say negative 3, for example. Do you see that on the y-axis, x is always 0? Again, on the y-axis, x is always 0. And that's critical. That's critical, because if you can recognize that on the y-axis, x is always 0, then you could create like a little t-chart here. You know? I wonder if I'll always talk like that, you know? Because I get away with it now, because at least I'm acting young, if I'm not completely young anymore. It's like, you make a little t-chart over here. Like, is that why I talk like that when I'm retired one day? Like, yeah, you know, you make a little t-chart over here, you know, and with the head shake and all that stuff. Um, and saying dude, <laughs> am I going to say dude? Like when I think of like respectable gentlemen that are older, you know, that they don't use words like dude. They'll use sir, but they won't use dude. I love sir, but I just don't want to relinquish dude. It's just my thing. It's my word. It's like I grew up on that word. Why would I just say, yeah, no longer? No, I'm just going to say dude and do the head bobble. Back to y-intercepts. We agree y-intercepts are when x is zero. Boom. If x is 0, what is y? If x is 0, what is y? Check it out. Let's plug 0 here. This is a trick I learned when I was learning this in high school. 3 times 0. If you're saying 3 times 0, basically 3 times 0 is 0. Go! Just cover it. New equation. 2y equals 6. If 2y equals 6, the y value that would make this equation work and have balance is 3. There's your y-intercept. The second you see 0 is x, you know you're on the y-intercept. Again, on the y-intercept, x has to be 0. So that point is 0, 3. All right, let's get into teacher mode and get some makas on my fingers. Makas. So the cross between Boston and Australia. I don't know what that was. All right. Whoop. Okay, 0, 3, a 1, 2, 3, boom. Now let's talk about the x-intercept. All right, I'm going to put it on you a little harder. If you're on the x-axis, what's always true? What's always the same? If you're on the x-axis, what's always 0? That's the next progression in the question. What would have to be 0 on the x-axis? Is it x, like over here? I don't know, like right there. What could this point potentially be? 
Where would the zero be? Would it be for x or for y? Yeah. y is zero. So the second we acknowledge that y is zero, that means you're on the x-axis. And if you're saying, what is x when y is zero? y is zero? Gone! What would x have to be? Two. There you go. There's your x-intercept. I'm going to draw the line through these two points. So if you know that definitely the line crosses this point and this point, you can create your line because all you need is two points to create a line. Let's put this down, 0, 3. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So to get the x-intercept, you plug y, 0. To get the y-intercept, you plug x, 0. That's all it is. Let's do this one. First, let's put it in standard form. Ugh! <laughs> Why do I have such a visceral reaction? Because I don't need it. I can just do the work. Answering my own question. All right, so first what we got to do is leave the x's on the left side and the y's and move the 12 over. So we got 2x minus 10y plus 12 on both sides equals 12. It would be standard form, uh, but what we need to do first is we need to make it in simplest form. So there is a common factor of 2, 10, and 12 here that can be divided on both sides to make this equation more simple. And that number is dividing both sides by none other than 2. So if you divide both sides by 2, all this stuff becomes, oh, don't forget! All this stuff becomes more simple. This goes to x minus negative 10 over 2 is negative 5y. And this becomes 12 over 2 is 6. Now it's standard form. And now we can get our x and y intercepts. It's really not so big a deal. Let's do it. Boom. When x is 0, you're at the y-intercept. When x is 0, the y-intercept, go over here. Boop. There you go. x is 0, gone. So that's negative 5y equals 6. Negative 5y equals 6. To get y by itself, we divide both sides by negative 5. I'm going to put it down. Come on. Do every process, man. Is the microphone catching my stomach growling? It's hilarious. It's like really strong. A lot of food talk. And this goes, boom. And that becomes negative 6 over 5. Right? Remember, just the fraction is positive. Or excuse me, the fraction is negative. So that's negative 6 over 5 there. And then if we want to get the x-intercept, let's do that again. We'll put it over here. Ah, let's organize it. We do all this. I've definitely done this before. Let's recreate the formula. Zoop. There you go. And now we want to go boom. If y is 0, you're at the x-intercept. Or you can rephrase that sentence. At the x-intercept, y is 0. If y is 0, gone. What would x be? There you go. 6. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. A few more lines, and that's pretty much it. A lot of people don't remember what that looks like, if that's a line or not. Okay, so we go over here, and the thing that I ask students is, where is x equal to 2? And many times they know, and they go here. And I'm like, great, put a point there. x is 2. Now the big question is, where else is x 2? Is there another place on the graph where x is also 2? And you think about it, well, if this was like 2, 0, that's true. Is there another place where x is 2? We think it through. How about that point? Is x 2 there? Because that's like 1, 2 for x, and then 1 for y. 2, 1. What about up here? Is x 2 here? 2, 5. See that? So you're saying that x is 2 here, and here, and here. And would x be 2 here? Maybe like 2, negative 4, for example. Indeed, it's true. So when you say x equals 2, it's actually a line that is vertical. It's a vertical line because this vertical line has a common value of x being 2 all the way up and down the line. Right? Some people memorize that. Rather than memorizing it, just understand that here x is 2, here x is 2, here x is 2, here x is 2. If x is always 2 up and down a line, then that line is vertical. So what do you think that y equals 2 would be? Put it down. 
vertical. Same concept. Y is 2 here, Y is 2 here, Y is 2 here. You'll notice X is always changing. X is changing. X is getting big, 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 big. X is getting small, small, small. Again, X is getting large because we're moving to the right. Y is getting small because we're moving to the left. Not, not Y, X. X is getting big here, right? X is getting big here. X is getting small here, right? X is very small. We could say like negative 10, 2. X is really, really small. But the consistent thing is that Y equals 2. Here's your horizontal line. Okay. Thank you. I have been waiting to do that all day. <laughs> Yay math! Thanks for watching.